Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think I'm pretty much substantially done. Uh, finally finished. And, uh, I mean, that's the inside. I have not painted the outside yet. Um, I think I'll save that to when this thing is finally installed or getting near to be installed. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to do a quick overview of uh, the final things that I did. And then um, I did have a, a goal in mind when I built this thing. I was uh, trying to do it for less than 100 bucks, so I want to go over the cost of actually doing something like this. And in the end, we'll see if I actually made made it under 100 bucks. Um, so yeah, this is it. Um, final things you guys haven't seen, I guess. Uh, the roof is on, and uh, I finished uh, crane number two over here. So that's all done. Uh, I guess I'll have to zoom in and show you guys that stuff. And uh, I've done the fencing in the front. Uh, excuse the pot. I needed something to raise it up and keep it level. So yeah, so there's a fencing and uh, I guess the coils are new as well. All right. Um, so let's go into some detail here and, and show you what I got. Uh, I guess I'll start with the roof because that's probably the easiest thing. So I'll just pick the camera up. Um, so that went on very nicely, actually. I did the upper supports there between the crane uh, tracks and uh, they're attached to the both roof sections. Uh, the roof section is pretty solid and the whole building is now quite solid, um, which I was hope uh, hopeful that it was gonna happen that way and it worked out well. Um, I'll just go over here to uh, door number three, I guess. Uh, this crane has quite a bit of detail on it. I'll zoom right in. So this is the spreader bar attached and that little uh, crane thing was totally scratch built. Um, if anybody's interested, I can go in more detail on that. And the cranes actually slide back and forth on the tracks quite nicely. I won't do it now because I'm on camera. I'll probably screw that up. And uh, yeah, it all came together quite well. So I'm really pleased with it. And I'll just give you another pan zoom of that. And so that's pretty much how it turned out. And actually, sorry, the other thing I did was I, I added some lighting as well. So I've got a couple switches here and there's five LEDs under the back roof. Um, two uh, white light and, th and three warm white, warm white lights. So, I mean, they don't really do much. They're battery operated right now. Just button battery. Oh, that one's broke. So that's not going to come on. Anyway, um, actually, yeah, you can see the lighting now. That's pretty cool. It's uh, more mood lighting than um, than structural lighting. Uh, it's uh, it's actually, I think if I hooked it up to a bus, it might be a bit brighter. But I've got three LEDs going through one of these little 3-volt uh, button batteries. Um, yeah, so that's, those are the additions I've made. And uh, yeah, so now what I'd like to do is uh, switch over and go through the cost of things and uh, see how well I did. So I'll start with the uh, the lowest price items and I'll go to the most expensive priced items. So I guess the cheapest thing um, that I just covered is lighting. Um, I spent about $2.50 on LEDs. That'd be the five of them, 50 cents a piece. And probably about $2.50 $2 on the switches and the, uh, so they've got little micro switches and uh, button battery holders and batteries. So all in all, that's $5. And uh, the next cheapest item would be the etch metal. Um, so if you go back to like episode one, I've got some etch metal in the, uh, the sewer grates here. There's three of those. Um, I've got some fencing here and that material there. I, I bought from China. You just get a really fine mesh um, fencing. And I've also got uh, a full sheet of uh, Part 20, which you guys have shown some interest in. Uh, the Part 20 stuff was all the walkways on the two cranes. Uh, so those are my three etch metal things, and they came out to a total of $8, which I think is really good going. Um, moving on to paint. Um, paint. I spent probably $10 on paint um, in total with Rattle Can. Um, my Rapido for the floor, I pretty much used up half a bottle of Rapido paint. 
And the one thing I did do pretty poorly was the yellow. I ended up wasting an entire bottle of um, X8, Tamiya X8 uh, Lemon Yellow. I just couldn't get the color right, and I ended up... It's it's not the most opaque paint, um, so I wasted an entire bottle of that. Um, so going on, uh, I think a total of paint was about $10, um, so that's, that's that category. Uh, moving on to the next category, rail. Okay, so there's actually quite a bit of rail in this in this model. Um, I ended up using uh, microengineering code 70 and code 55. So the equivalent of four full pieces of code 70. Um, now I got this as a, a tear up from a previous layout, so I bought it used. Um, so that was $12 and then I got code 55 and the code 55 is being used for the cranes and the, the crane rails up here. Uh, so there's two whole sections of that, six feet. So uh, I got it for a dollar a foot. So total rail cost was eighteen dollars. Um, one category where I did spend more than I thought I would um, was actually adhesives. Um, those little bottles of CA that I used from the dollar store, I ended up using about ten or eleven of those, and I also used half a bottle of uh, Plastruct. Uh, um, what do you call it? MKE, I guess. Um, so I came out to a total of eighteen dollars just for adhesives which surprised me, um, but that's how it is. And uh, next category would be uh, things that I bought. So um, I obviously bought the Walters coils. Um, that was $11. And uh, Walters doors came out of a kit. So there are three doors in their surroundings. At the back, there's one, two, and three. Um, I put down $5 for those doors as part of the kit. I did get a really good price on the kit. Um, so yeah, I mean, it probably was a lot less than that, but if you had to buy them three doors, it'd probably be $5 from Walters. Uh, my little recycle bin over here. Um, yeah, that was probably 50 cents. It came as a six pack. Uh, the figure over there is about $2 and 50 cents. I figure, ha uh ha, -huh, nice pun. Um, and I guess the most expensive thing I bought would be the Titchy ladders. Um, that would be the cage ladder sets. There's one there and one there. So I used about one and a half sets. Uh, so for $7.50. So things that I bought just for this model um, would be $26.50. And moving on to the final category. Um, this is the most expensive category was styrene. Um, and I guess we all know styrene is expensive. Um, so what I, I'll break it down into styrene that I bought as evergreen packs. Um, so I bought three, well, four packs of I-beams, um, three packs just to do the, uh, these are the nine mil ones. I think it's 479 or 279 I-beam, uh, Evergreen 279. That's the nine mil I-beams. I had to buy three packs of those just to do all my horizontal big beams. And then, um, I bought another pack to do these, these verticals here. So that's four packs, um. Plus, I ended up buying the, um, when I did the roof, I bought the uh, corrugated uh, sheet just to do my uh, thumb imprint on. Um, so, yeah, that worked out to about $38 just for the styrene there. And um, the other the other styrene I got was my two garage sale signs, and that makes up the floor and the two sidewalls. Um, so those signs were $2.50 each, so that's $5.00. And then the rest of my styrene actually was Chinese sourced, um, which is actually quite cheap. So all of the I-beams you see on the back wall, um, the I-beams that I custom made, or the H columns that I custom made, and these columns up here, or sorry, these beams up here, these I-beams, and then my my roof joists, the two that I made there with the coat hanger in the middle. Um, and then all the rods that I use. So the rods would be the railings on the on the cranes and uh any kind of rods that did the fencing as well so the the fence posts and the and the top rail there um and then the the rods that i used for the garage door rollers and plus all the miscellaneous uh, styrene that i used to custom build everything else um that came out to oh what did i say uh so five dollars for rods chinese the chinese sourced um, I beams, five bucks, uh, flat stock from China, $1. And then 
my 30,000 stuff that I got from PNA Plastics in Hamilton here, I used uh, way less than a quarter sheet, four by eight sheet. So my four by eight sheet was $21. So I put about $3 worth of uh, 30,000 stock. And the 30,000 stock was the back wall, uh, the ceiling, and the two exterior walls. Um, and then some other stuff as well, like uh, just the trim around the edges and stuff that you see. So yeah, grand total. Um, did I make it under $100? Uh, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I ended up spending $142.50 just in materials on this model. Um, so that was about $42.50 over my budget. Now, where I went wrong in some places, the adhesive section where I spent $18 on glue, I could totally do better on that next time around. Um, and rail, I think, uh, if I chose instead of code 70 or code 55, I, I could have chosen different rail that was cheaper. Um, maybe I could do something there. And then I guess if I didn't buy the additional stuff like the steel coils, um, you know, maybe it wouldn't look as good, but you know, I'd save some money there. Um, the other one is, um, you know, I won't have to buy that, uh, evergreen corrugated sheet again, which was an $8 charge. So I think I could have probably done this for maybe 120 and maybe 115, which I think is pretty good going for this model. It's, it's actually almost three feet. Well, it's more than three feet long, um, and a foot wide. So anyway, um, I wanted to do a cost break breakdown for myself. Um, I went into this model not knowing how much it was going to cost, but I figured, ah, hundred bucks, let's just call it that and see if I can get under that. Um, but I think, uh, I'm not sure too many people do this, uh, and see how much they actually spent. So just out of curiosity, I wanted to total it all up and, um, you guys can get an idea of now of what this thing actually costs. I mean, this doesn't include time obviously, but, um, all in all, I think it was, uh, a pretty good exercise. Um, I enjoyed building it and I am kind of glad that it's done. <laughs> I was, uh, I was getting like a bit antsy about getting it finished, but, um, yeah, I can't wait to get it on the layout and run some trains through it. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys have a good day and, uh, apologies if the video goes a bit long, uh, like, and subscribe if you can and, uh, yeah, have a good rest of your week. Thanks.